There we go. We are recording in both Zoom and we are live in Facebook. I am so excited to be here tonight with Dr. Anna Town. Thank you for joining us again. This is our second interview in the group. So happy to have you and your expertise here to help us all understand a really important topic in, well, really pregnancy and postpartum, but really this is going to be um, focused on the postpartum time frame. For those of us who are suffering from um, diastasis recti. And so I know you've got a lot of really great information for us tonight, and then we were going to open it up at the end for maybe some um, Q&A if we do have anybody join us live. So I'm going to be monitoring my phone. So if you see me looking over this way for those who are watching, that's what I'm doing so I can make sure I don't miss any questions that do pop in. And I'm going to let you run with this, Anna. So go ahead and um, introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about yourself, and then we'll get dive, diving into this awesome topic. Yeah, sounds great. Um, well, thanks so much, Jesse, for um, asking me to come back on because um, I know we talked a little bit about diastasis mm -hmm. recti last time, but it really, there's so much information. Uh, and so oh, yeah. it's really hard to like shorten it. And so I'm really excited just to like really focus in. Yes. And also um, it's such a common thing that I treat in the clinic um, as a physical therapist. And so um, I really could uh, yeah, I'm just shortening down my talk because there's a lot I could say. But, <laughs> yes. um, yeah, my little intro. So I'm a, a physical therapist and I work at Rebound Sports and PT and it's in Fort Collins, Colorado. And I've been working there for almost nine years now. And I love my job. Um, so I used to work with all athletes, um, do sports medicine only, and then a lot of like orthopedic stuff. So ankles, knees, hips, back, neck, shoulders, everything. Um, but now, um, I still do that. And I love that. I love working with athletes because I was an athlete and I still like to be active, but, um, now I really focus on women's health. And so I've kind of integrated, um, what I used to do is sports medicine. And now I'm really focused on women's health. So a lot of pelvic floor dysfunction, a lot of diastasis recti, a lot of pain and pregnancy. Um, so sciatica, mm -hmm. um, low back pain, there's a lot of things that can happen. Um, if you know, we're in this post oh, yes. most of us have experienced a lot of those things. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, so I, I love helping mamas, um, because I just think there's a lot of myths out there that pain, like pregnancy has to hurt all the time. Okay. And the postpartum, you just have to expect to pee on a trampoline the rest of your life. Like there's just <sighs> false information out there. And so I'm really passionate about my job and just spreading the word that there like are things you can do uh, yes. to take care of yourself yes. and have better quality of life. Like it really is a quality of life issue. And so that's a little bit of my spiel, um, of what I do. And I also, um, love being a mama of two yes. that are quite the handful these days, they're one <laughs> but we're doing good. Yes. I love how active you are with them. I think that's one yes. of the things Thank that you. I really love about your programs that you offer and just the work that you do is you show how to incorporate that into mommy life, because I feel like for so many of us, that's what kind of keeps us from really focusing in on some of these problems is yes. one, it's embarrassing, which it shouldn't be, but it, we have a lot of stigmatized things, um, when it comes to these kind of women's health dysfunctions and these issues. Yep. And so I feel like we don't talk about it as much. So that's why I feel like yeah. this things like this is so important because we are sh shining a light on it and saying you're not alone and you don't have to suffer quietly about this, you know, but I love that you show how to incorporate it into your life because yeah. you know, the other thing is the time, right. And we're like, okay. well, I don't have the time to sit here and do all these exercises, you know, and ensure I'm doing them properly and all these things. So, um, I just am fangirling over that part of working with you. So, <laughs> but I'm so glad you're here tonight. And I think we did have one person on here live. I think I see um, Melissa. Hello. Thank you for joining us. If you have any questions, um, I'm monitoring the comments. So please drop them below and I'll be sure to read them out loud since we are recording this um, Zoom and on Facebook. So for those who aren't in the group who are watching this later can um, get all the great information that we're sharing in the comments as well. All right. So I'm going to let you take over. This is so exciting. <laughs> yeah, great. Um, okay. So I wanted to start with talking about like, what is, um, mm -hmm. diastasis recti, um, yes. and it can be pronounced both ways. So diastasis or diastasis <laughs> we'll both ways. And honestly, I say it both ways. So yeah. just know that I'm talking about the same thing. Okay. Um, so, and it's also, I, a lot of times I call it DR because it's just yeah. shorter. It's, it's just easier. I, I literally, this is embarrassing, but you guys, 
I have it sticky note on how to pronounce it phonet phonetically because I was like, I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna butcher it. <laughs> yeah, you'll hear it, you'll hear it both ways. I say yeah. sister, I ask the sis. Um so what it is, I think it's important to talk like to be like, what are we talking about here? Because it's right. commonly uh, like a term that's thrown out a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so what it is is it's thinning mm -hmm. of the fascia or the tissue in between your right and your left apple. Um, I actually like I'm I'm such an anatomy nerd, um, and I was like pulling out pictures from my anatomy book, and I was like, yes, oh, love it. it. Um, so you'll see. Um, I mean this picture here you have again the right and the left ab wall and um let me get a little closer here so it's like cut in two so the linea alba um is again that tissue right in between so this is like the six-pack muscle it would be on the other side too and again the linea alba is a tissue in between that okay for the fascia in between the two so um when you'll notice um, diastasis is when you're performing a movement of force, like picking up your kid, um, mm -hmm. or doing a sit up or anything that's a force you'll notice in that area of again, tissue that will be, we call it doming or combing. Mm -hmm. And so that tissue will push or because that tissue isn't tight or together, like it used to be, um, you'll notice doming or coning. Yeah. Okay. So everyone, um, experiences diastasis during pregnancy, like mm -hmm. every pregnant mama, um, if you're going to full term, um, but I'd say really anyone that hits like third trimester, that's when you're mm -hmm. really going to start seeing it because baby's growing. So our abdominal wall has to stretch, 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 stretch in order to make room for baby. Yeah. So, um, if you, yeah, there's just, again, some false information out there. And so a lot of people are like, oh, I don't want to get it during pregnancy. It's like, well, sorry, you, you're going to yeah. get it during pregnancy. Um, what we care more about is again, the postpartum aspect of it. Um, so yeah, so again, it's a normal phenomenon that our bodies amazingly are able to stretch in order to grow a baby. Um, but who, who gets it again, everyone, but then mm -hmm. what research shows is that, about 40% of women, um, have it still at that six months postpartum mark. Okay. And so, um, and the, the research on this isn't great. So again, this is like loose research. I mm -hmm. can't like stand behind it. Like say that's a hundred percent accurate number, but right. roughly 40% women still have it at 40 or six months postpartum. Okay. Um, and so most again, that's saying 60% of women from, you know, right at birth into um, six months, it's going to heal. Mm -hmm. um, the chance of having diastasis not heal increases with some subsequent births. And okay. so um, if it's like baby number two, three and beyond your chances are increased. And also if you had it with baby one, the chances are higher than you'll have it more or greater amount with mm -hmm. your subsequent pregnancies. Makes sense. So I'm a huge act, act like advocate for getting help and addressing mm -hmm. it in between kiddos. Yes. Um, I can't tell you how many moms come and like after baby two or three, and they're like, I haven't done anything. And the, they're kind of in rough shape because mm -hmm. their diastasis is really bad because they haven't worked on it. And so right. I'm not saying that you can't do anything. There's a lot you can still do, but I would say in between kiddos, if you plan on having more, it is actually really helpful um, to get that diastasis addressed. Um, so yeah, that's kind of who gets it. Um, again, all pregnant moms, and then again, 60% do heal in that six month postpartum. If you're not in that 60% at that six month mark, that's okay. But that's when, um, and we'll talk about this a little bit more later, but that's when I would really recommend doing something about it and seeking some help. Okay. okay. Really quick, um, and I'm going to stop you for one second because we did have one question come in, and this is a really oh, yeah. good time to address it. So, Caitlin oh, okay. asks, "Is there anything you can do during pregnancy to help?" So, she's just wondering that. Yeah, that's great. That's a great question, and yeah, let's talk about that now. I was going to talk a little about that a little bit in the okay. top do's and don'ts, but let's just talk about that now because there actually is a lot you can do. Awesome. Uh, and not to. <laughs> <In Yeah. laughs> um, and again, this is like, might, will probably be another talk, Jesse. They'll have to talk. Yeah, about I know. Because right? <laughs> okay. um, what you do in pre pregnancy really like sets the stage for right. postpartum. And so um, I actually do recommend 
uh, doing some core work in pregnancy, okay. um, but it's going to, it has to be the right core work. And so, um, if you're doing a lot of like, uh, exercises where you're seeing increase again, doming or coning. Um, so again, as those ab, as the ab wall separates, 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 as the baby grows, you're going to notice more coning and doming. So if you're doing a lot of high level planks, sit-ups, crunches, um, anything where you're noticing a lot of coning and doming is going to, uh, really increase the chance of, um, having diastasis. That's harder to address, harder okay. to feel, um, in postpartum. Okay. So again, I recommend core during pregnancy, but really specific core that isn't going to be causing really large forces of intra-abdominal pressure. And again, increasing, um, that, that, um, that gap or that dome. Awesome. Okay. That make sense? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I so think, yeah, just making sure we didn't have any other questions. Just a lot of hellos. Hi everybody. I'm so excited. We yeah. have people here live. This is awesome. Yeah, that is awesome. <laughs> I'm excited too. Um, so We've kind of talked about, again, what it is, um, kind of talked about who gets it. So now let's talk about how to identify it. And this is a really common question. And actually, just like any area in medicine, the research is always changing on this. And so I'm going to talk about kind of the more traditional method. And then I'm going to talk about a little bit more of what we're finding more with research recently. So the traditional way to measure is um, laying on your back with your knees bent and then just doing a crunch. So hands behind your head and just crunching up. Um, what you'll do then is you'll, um, you'll find your like belly button. Okay. And you'll put your fingers um, next to each other. And so if, if that gap is wider than two fingers, then they say that that is diastasis recti. Okay. okay. If it, and if it's two, if it's two finger width or, or wider. Okay. So three fingers or anything, but you'll check at both your belly button you'll check a couple of fingers above your belly button, and then you'll check a couple of fingers below your belly button. Okay? okay. So it's not just at that belly button level. You actually want to check both above and below. Okay. So some people just end up with a belly button. Um, and then some people just end up with it above some people just below and some all three. Okay. Okay. So if you have like a one or like one and a half or anything under two finger gap, that's pretty normal. Okay. Um, in post in postpartum. And beyond. And then if you have three or four finger gap, that's pretty severe. Um, diastasis that I would definitely, again, seek out, um, women's health physical therapy for, um, but so again, that's kind of more the traditional model. I really recommend actually having a medical professional test this. You can do it on yourself, but it's actually really hard because you're trying to do a crunch and you're trying to like find stuff. <laughs> right. So I always recommend if you can even grab someone else to do it on you. Yeah. Um, it's helpful. But again, what, what we're finding more now with research is that we don't care as much about the width, the finger width. We actually care more about the depth. So when mm -hmm. I'm checking patients in the clinic, I'm thinking, I'm feeling, okay, how far can I push that finger in? Um, and so, um, the width, um, again, it's helpful to know, but we can actually still transfer load from our right to left ab and left to right ab with a little bit of width in that gap. Mm -hmm. But if it's a huge gap, then we actually can't transfer loads mm -hmm. between ab walls like we need to. And so again, that's actually what we're noticing more with research these days. And so um, what I always ask my patients is, you know, if you're feeling in again, that linea alba or in that fascia, um, it's kind of like, what is the quality of that tissue? So what does it feel like? Is it really, really, and I'm not talking about this, this might, some people might like, well, it's all squishy. Okay. My question is, is that area in the middle when you're doing a crunch, is it soft and squishy in the middle again, in the center of the abs. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cause I know a lot of us moms are like my whole belly is squishy. Okay. That's not <laughs> what I'm talking about here. Um, but what we want and again, in the linea alba, when we're crunching is we want to feel some firmness in that center, mm -hmm. meaning again, the ab, to, ab right and left are connected and there is force in between the two. Um, if it's super squishy and you can go super deep, then the chances are that again, those loads aren't transferring, um, right and left. Okay. okay. Um, so again, we care a little bit about width. That's the traditional model. Um, also we care a little bit more about depth mm -hmm. and also just kind of, again, what's, what's the quality feel like? Is it firm? Is it soft? Is it squishy? What does it feel like in that center? Mm -hmm. So Perfect. hopefully that's helpful for kind of identifying it again. Um, I, I always recommend if you can have someone else look at it, it is helpful. 
Um, and then the other thing I always kind of recommend is wait till that six weeks mark, because mm. there's so much that changes yes. in the first six weeks. And so I know it's like easy for a lot of, especially my active moms to like check it like week one or two. And you're like, oh my gosh, so much changes in the first six to eight weeks and 12 mm. weeks postpartum that I wouldn't be like too majorly concerned about it. You can mm-hmm. test it. Um, but I wouldn't even, I don't even really want my mom's patients no. to be very much crunches at that point. Right. right. And so, um, anyway, so don't check it too early. Yeah. And if you do just don't do it very often and, and don't be too concerned about it. Um, cause again, in that first six months, there's a lot of change there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I agree with that on, on a lot of levels. <laughs> Yes. yes. <laughs> Take those first six weeks to really yes. just rest and connect with baby and, you yeah. know, focus in on your nutrition, your self-care, all of the things. Yeah, for sure. Resting and hydrating. Sure. Yes. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I have any other questions. So yeah, we're good. <laughs> okay. Um, Okay. So my next question was like, that I was going to answer was just kind of like, why, again, why is it, why does it happen or why does it continue? I guess, why does it not heal? Mm-hmm. So, um, I love this analogy. I always use this analogy in the, in the clinic too. So I'm, I'm imagine like, okay, LaCroix can, right? So this is your core canister. And so you have your diaphragm on top, pelvic floor on the bottom, and then we have your back muscles and then your oblique muscles and your transverse abdominis running around the side into the front. Again, this is what connects here. And then you have your six pack muscles here. Okay. But the um, transverse abdominus runs deeper than that. And so do the obliques. Okay. Mm -hmm. So again, all of that, it composes your core canister. Um, And so when there's an imbalance in the system and you do something of force. So again, the analogy of like picking up your kid um, and they just keep getting heavier, right? Those kids just keep growing and getting heavier. So you're exerting a lot of force. That force is going to go to the weakest spot. Mm -hmm. And so for most moms, there's going to be two weak spots. That's either going to be your diastasis. Okay. That linea alba or it's going to be pelvic floor. Mm -hmm. And so that's why those are the two most common injuries that we see, um, postpartum, um, is that those are the the areas of most weakness, um, post baby. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so again, it's a, it's a pressure issue. It's that intra-abdominal pressure. Um, it has to go somewhere and there's not enough again, strength in all those areas to keep it in. So it's going to go to the area, the area of least resistance. Mm -hmm. Makes a lot of sense. Um, and so, yeah, so again, it, it's going to either lead to diastasis that's not fixing. If every time you lift up your kid or every time you get out of bed, um, even lift up the groceries, or if you're doing back to fitness or whatever it is, if everything you do is again, that pushing the ab ball apart because your pressure is going there or again, same thing with the pelvic floor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and so then that will lead to like incontinence prolapse and that type of stuff. Um, so yeah, the mechanism injury, um, I mean, it really does make sense when you Mm -hmm. think about it in that, in that way. Yeah. I had uh, one quick clarification question come in from Josephine. So she said, sorry, just to be clear, we should wait six weeks or six months before being concerned about DR. Um, so yeah, so that's a great question. So six, I would wait six weeks to even test it. Mm. Um, and actually I was going to address this a little bit, um, later in, when I talk about, um, uh, do's and don'ts, but let's just talk about it now. So I was going to talk about when to seek help. Right. And so I kind of have different, uh, I don't know, qualifications, I guess, for this. So if you have an umbilical hernia, um, which we haven't talked about yet, but when it's, it's when there's weakness or a tear in the muscle and then of the tissue of the belly button, and there's actually tissue popping out. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you have that, or if you have that severe diastasis, which is like three or four fingers, then I would seek help right away. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't wait until that six months mark. Okay. Um, but the other thing I would say is if you are planning to return to fitness, um, I work with a super active mama population, like professional runners and professional athletes that are like, um, I need to run as soon as possible. Mm-hmm. And so I'm always like holding the back and like, no, wait a little <laughs> longer. We got to get you there. Um, and so again, for those moms, I always want to make sure that the diastasis is as cleared as possible. So I want them, um, before they're running, before they're jumping, um, before they're lifting, um, especially with weight, 
Um, I really want to make sure that that diastasis might not be completely gone, but that I've evaluated it and then make sure. I make sure that, that, again, the load is transferring from right to left, left to right well. So they might have, again, a little bit of a width, but it's not deep. It's mm -hmm. not squishy. It's firm, all that stuff. So yeah. if you are working on returning to activity, I actually would not wait to the six month mark um, to, seek, to seek help or to do like a rehab type program. Mm -hmm. um, because I, most moms that are active don't want to wait till a six month mark to be right. active. So I would actually seek help before then. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Proactive about it. But if you are someone that like, okay, we all know for six months are like absolutely insane. Right. Um, <laughs> little is just turned one. Um, and I'm like, wow, that was a blur. Yeah. Um, and so I know it's like the first six months go by so quick. Um, when you look back at it, not always in the moment, but um, so if it's like first six months went by and you're like, oh, wow, I, like my day stasis is still there, then that is a good time to address it. Um, but again, my, my active mamas, I'm like, hey, get in there sooner. If you yeah. want to work sooner than six months, um, I would say get help sooner. Perfect. Um, but yeah, the good news is that it's never too late. So the body is so amazing. I mean, like all research shows that like 90 year old patients can make strength gains and improvements. So our neuromuscular system is amazing. So like our brain can still communicate with those muscles and like build muscle tissue and retrain movement patterns throughout our whole lifespan. And so I have a lot of moms that actually do um, like the strong core mama program in mm -hmm. their fifties and their sixties, and they have like totally improved symptoms. So less diastasis, um, like less incontinence. Um, and it's all these moms that are like 30 plus years out of having kids. Right. So it is never too late, but it is always to your advantage to address it right. sooner. Yeah. 100%. I agree for sure. Awesome. I think those were, I think we're caught Wait. up on the question. So Josephine, yeah. let us know if that didn't answer your question, but it seems like yeah, you're saying don't even worry about testing before the six weeks. And then, yeah. you know, unless you're super active, you don't really have to be too concerned until that six month mark. Cause everything changes. Yeah. Did I kind of cap yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, would say, I would say, um, again, I'd say kind of, I hate to like stereotype people. It's right? very but personal. Yeah. Everyone's yeah. so different. Right? right. So, um, so again, I know that my clinic, it's a sports clinic. And so we see a really high, like a highly active population. So I right. see a very unique, like niche. Mm -hmm. Um, and so again, for like those moms, I'm really advocating for them to soon. like, get in soon, mm -hmm. um, get screened by women's health PT, do a rehab program for that soon, um, before they're really cleared for physical activity. Yeah. But if they sure. don't, then it gets worse and then right. it's not good. Um, but yeah, if you are like, okay, you know what? I'm just really busy with my kids and right. going back to work and taking care of my family. And I don't have a lot of time from a lot of like higher level activities, like mm -hmm. beyond walking. And, um, like if you're doing impact and running, jumping, lifting, I would definitely say sure. um, sooner. Yeah. So yeah, hopefully that's helpful. Yeah. Josephine says I'll be four weeks postpartum on Saturday and dying to get back in the gym. So I should test at six weeks. Is there anything I can do from now until then? Yes, there's so much to do, <laughs> which actually kind of leads to our next question. Perfect. Uh, yeah. My next question is, can you fix it? Um, which again, it's kind of a longer answer. Mm -hmm. Um, it's so individualized, right? right? All of our bodies are so different. And so, um, a lot of, I didn't talk about this a lot, but a lot of it, the um, diastasis is really genetic. So mm -hmm. it's like, okay, how short are our tor torsos? How long are our torsos? How big are our babies? Did we carry them forward? Did we carry them like more like all around? Mm -hmm. um, so there's just so many individualized um, aspects to this. And then it's also like, how does your body, how does your fascia heal? Um, mm -hmm. So it's going to be completely different across the board, but the, the answer for 99% of moms really is like, can you fix this is yes. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd say like majority of cases, um, all the ones that I've been able to treat have been able to have, um, like resolution without surgery and surgery really is an option for really severe diastasis, um, from like moms, um, multiples, um, sometimes mm -hmm. that's something I pursue, but it's something I don't even tell my patients to even consider until at least one month postpartum and tell at least addressing it and working on it for like at least six months. Mm -hmm. uh, so 
yeah, so most cases, again, the majority of cases really um, can be fixed with mm -hmm. rehabilitation and don't need to go down the surgical route. That's great. Yeah. Um, so you really just need the key. The answer is really having like the correct treatment plan. And so the, what it really comes down to is learning how to fire those core muscles again. Um, when we're pregnant, those core muscles are stretched out so much and they completely forget how to fire. And the other thing that happens is our pelvis. Um, I kind of get an analogy that's like a fruit bowl. So imagine this like bowl of fruit, right? And so our pelvis rotates forward. Um, and so all that fruit's like falling out, but it's because we have this huge like basketball here. So our pelvis rotates forward. And when our pelvis rotates forward, our abdominal muscles and core muscles aren't in a good position to fire. And so what we really need to do is get our pelvis in a good position. And then we need to learn, retrain those deep core muscles, um, how to fire again. So again, it's not always about closing that gap. You might still have like two fingers or so of a gap width wise, but we need to make sure that we have a well-functioning core. The mm -hmm. deepest core um, is firing. And so that we're not putting all the stress just through that linea alba and still getting that coning and doming. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it really, a lot, this is where a lot of moms get frustrated is the treatment plan is actually kind of taking it back a notch because it brings it back to the basics. It's back to breathing and posture, which are two things that if you're an active mom, you kind of like, well, that's boring. <laughs> I want to go back to the gym, Anna. So why are we talking about breathing and posture? But again, with what I talked about, um, the core canister, right? So I talked about how the diaphragm is actually the top of your core canister. And a lot of us really actually forget how to breathe properly when we're pregnant because our ribs are so flared. Mm. Um, and that we really forget how to do what I call th uh, 3D breathing or three-dimensional breathing. So we actually forget how to get those ribs to move on inhale and then come back down with exhale. Mm -hmm. So a lot of this, um, the first thing that I do for a lot of moms. And you'll see, um, this in like my strong core mama program is it's just bringing it back to breathing. So really paying attention to what is your rib cage doing? What is your back doing? What are your core muscles in your belly doing with breathing? Mm -hmm. And so that's really the first step for any, um, type of rehab. Then the second step is again, posture. So like I talked about that fruit bowl is tipped forward and then usually our rib cage is flared forward. And so again, we're in this position where our abs can't fire. So we really have to work about work on stacking our rib cage over our pelvis. Um, and so those core muscles are in a good position to fire and to activate. Um, and so the um, retraining process is gonna go so much better. Again, if that, if those ribs are stacked over your pelvis. Hmm. Um, so, and it's, it's your posture throughout your entire day, which is where it gets tricky for moms. It's when you're carrying baby. It's when you're nursing baby. Um, it's like throughout the day, it's not just maybe when you go for a walk, it's just mm -hmm. with daily life, which is hard to pay attention to when you're stressed and tired, <laughs> tired. Oh, for but sure. It, it is really important. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, so those are again, kind of the two foundational aspects I build off of breathing and posture. And then from there, um, again, kind of the top do's, um, we want to make sure we're focusing on the deepest core. So we really take the approach of strengthening the inside out. Mm -hmm. So we strengthen, again, the, what's called the transversus abdominis, which this is like, I swear, it's the coolest muscle in the body because it's like a, a back brace. So if you see people, again, in the gym or walking around um, or like a corset, this is a muscle that like anatomically is your back core set. Mm -hmm. And so we need that muscle to be working. And a lot of times, again, it's so stretched out and we totally lose touch of it in pregnancy. So we have to work really hard to get that muscle back. Mm -hmm. um, and then the obliques are so important too. Um, they run like coat pockets. So they run from our ribs down our pelvis, again, like coat pockets. And so those obliques are super important. Again, also very stretched out and affected with that rib position. Mm -hmm. um, so those are the muscles that we really want to work on. Um, uh, obliques are super helpful because again, they, um, do any type of rotation, which we're doing a lot of as, as mamas. Um, I, I do think as again, another like big, um, like do in the rehab 
program is a lot of moms are so fearful of making it worse that they just don't move at all. Mm -hmm. But movement really is helpful if it's the right movement. Mm -hmm. So if you're, um, again, like walking and doing other things, um, or other activities that you don't see a lot of doming with, and you don't feel a lot of pressure with, then I'd say keep moving. Um, cause some moms really are just, um, so fearful that they don't do anything. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'd say like, keep moving. Don't be so fearful that you're like, Oh my gosh, I can't do anything with my abs. Um, mm -hmm. so those are kind of my top, my top do's. Um, if you guys have questions about that, let me know, but I'll kind of jump into the don'ts. Mm -hmm. Um, this one, <laughs> I was like, should I really say this? But I really see a lot of patients come in that have YouTube diastasis recti exercises and they really got worse. And I hate, I hate saying that because I'm sure a lot of people have good intentions with mm -hmm. what they're putting out there. Um, but there, yeah. So, so I don't know. I've just seen this enough that it's been really hard because I'm like, oh, yeah. these moms, they're just like trying to get better and they, right. you know, Google diastasis and do an exercise. Yeah. Uh, but again, if they don't know what to look for, they don't know what to feel for, and uh, they don't know what they're actually trying to target, then right. again, they can't make it worse. So that's my big don't is um, don't just YouTube or Google <laughs> diastasis recti exercises. Um, uh, and also don't again, do a lot of those six pack exercises. So a lot of moms, um, if they did core work before pregnancy and they were doing a lot of, a lot of crunches, um, maybe like Russian twists, a lot of sit-ups, um, those are not actually the exercises you want to go back to immediately. Um, really what you want to do instead is you want to do more of, again, that transverse is abdominus, that deepest core. You want to do more of the obliques. You really want to strengthen everything else first before you go back to those higher level exercises. Mm -hmm. And so those are the, those are the big, the big don'ts. Um, but, um, yeah, I, again, I, I'm, really trying to dispel all the myths that are out there. And so I would say if you, there are some definitely good core um, pelvic floor programs out there. Um, just make sure you're looking at the credentials of the, the person that's putting it out there. Yeah. Make sure that they have like a woman's health specialty. I would always recommend that they are like, I mean, a physical therapist based program. Yeah. Uh, they have that training in anatomy and physiology. Um, and also like some type of pregnancy or postpartum certification and training. Um, cause it really is a select group, uh, yes. select population. Um, and so, yeah, so those, those are the things I look for if you are looking for a program, but, um, the program, the important thing is you don't want to just find an exercise and just stick with it forever. We actually want to challenge your system and overload your system. So, um, that's, so I have the strong core mama program, just so you know about it, yes. <laughs> um, but the, why I love it so much and why I created it is because it's 12 weeks of, of building on from the foundation up. So again, we start with a posture, we start with the breathing, and then each week we load the tissue a little bit more and we build upon what the foundation we've started or created. And so um, a lot of times moms will be like, well, I've been doing this exercise that I looked up for like three months and I don't notice any change. Well, it's like, well, yeah, you have to stress the tissue. It's just like anything else. You can't just go to the gym and just keep doing five pound bicep curls and expect to get stronger. You need to continue to build on that, right? Right. Um, and so, um, there is this like over, um, overloading principle that we need to incorporate in, a in a diastasis or any type of core building program. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, tell us a little bit more about how we can get in touch with you about your program. I know you do it quarterly. So if you want to kind of talk about that, it would be great. Yeah, for sure. I love, love talking about, um, <laughs> So I used to do Strong Core Mama in person, which was mm -hmm. awesome. And then a year and a half ago, almost two years ago, it's crazy how time has flown. I, um, I was like, oh my goodness, I can reach so many more moms um, by doing it virtually. And also the common thing I keep hearing moms say over and over again is like, I can't get childcare. Yeah. Um, finding a time that all moms could show up at the same time was nearly impossible. Right. And so this program is on demand and it's also, um, all, all virtual. And so it's so nice for moms to be able to like, be like, okay, I have 15 minutes. I'm going to do what I can. And then I'll stop it and I'll start right back up tomorrow. Right. Um, I, um, usually like I've done the program after both my girls and I'm always like, 
the girls are usually somewhere around. I'll usually be like, okay, here's your special toy for this 20 minutes where I'm going to do my core work. Um, but it just, again, it's, it's helpful. Obviously you can't do that in a group exercise class. Um, okay. right. Have like your kids running around, but, um, yeah, so I check in with everyone um, regularly just to make sure that there is no issues, no pain, uh, no, again, diastasis symptoms, no prolapse symptoms, incontinence, et cetera. Um, so yeah, it's really fun. I've had so many success stories. I think that's why I keep doing it is that, again, I have like 60-year-old moms mm -hmm. that are like, this is amazing. They're actually grandmas. Like mm -hmm. I've had moms do it with there. Oh, um, I love that. Yes. Awesome. Like, Generational so cool. healing. Yeah. <laughs> well, this wasn't, this did, the stuff I've, uh, stuff did not exist for that yeah. generation. Oh no, not and at so all. Just, like, this is amazing. Like right. th there's things I can do for this. Like I wish I would have done this 30 years ago. Yeah. So anyway, that's um, super rewarding, but I have yeah, a lot of moms do it in the first, um, like I have some moms that are like, oh my gosh, 12 weeks or six weeks, get me started ASAP. And then I have some moms that are like, okay, one year out and they can start to think about it. Some that are five, some that are 10 years out. Um, mm -hmm. It's really wherever you're at in the journey mm -hmm. um, and are able to commit the time um, to again, addressing it. Um, and it's not, the program isn't just for diastasis. It really is a core and pelvic floor program. So again, I, kind of going back to like this analogy, we address everything in this core canister because mm -hmm. we can't just address diastasis without addressing the pelvic floor and the diaphragm and everything else. Um, so, so yeah, yeah, holistically healing it, you know, like so much of what we deal with in postpartum, it really needs to be a holistic approach and this is no different. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, so I think, did I describe it well, Jesse? I mean, yes, you know, yes, yes, yes. It's great. And I, what I love about it too, is that it's not just searching on YouTube for like some random online course, you know, it's truly, you have this, um, this great access to it on demand, but then you have you checking in on you and you can say, like, I even asked you a few questions that I was dealing with. Like I had carpal tunnel with my kids, um, postpartum and in pregnancy. And I was having a lot of wrist pain with some of the exercises and being able to have that resource of you to reach out and say, what can I do to make this easier on me was just so nice because it just humanizes the process and having that access to somebody who is knowledgeable and isn't going to steer me in the wrong direction. Oh, you should try yeah. X, Y, and Z instead, you know, or me trying to, I say the same thing with my lactation work. Like you don't need to go to Dr. Google or mom's groups to ask about these things, you know, like it's good to have that resource and that expert to help you in a more customized individual way. So I love yeah. that about the program is that you were so, you know, accessible and, um, the way you explain things in the program is really nice too, because it's not just yeah. like, do this. It's, this is why we're doing this. Now let's, well, now let's do it. You know, it was very like yeah. you, you explain what it is, what we're addressing and then showing it. And then it's mm -hmm. nice to be able to do it on your own time, your own time. Yeah, too. Definitely. Right. So, yeah. I feel like sometimes I'm like, man, I talk way too much during the programs because I like, I'm really big on cues and visualizations yes, and like, me too. Hearing it. and I always talk about, okay, I want you to feel this. And if you feel this, then let's change this. Yes. Um, and so really big on cues and making sure people are feeling the right exercise, the right muscles. But, um, I also just tell moms, I'm like, majority of these exercises you will have never seen, which yeah. a lot of people are like, poor, like, that's kind of boring. I've done that, you know, a right. lot in gym or maybe in high school or sport or something, but these are exercises that are really specific on um, postpartum. So they're mm -hmm. really working on getting again, rib cage stacked over pelvis. Right. Um, that again, in a way that's very unique and different from uh, a normal, like core routine, I guess. Right. Absolutely. And I think it's important to understand too, for like, even the really active moms that might be, you know, kind of resistant to wanting to start back at the basics, like you say, but it's important, I think for all of us to remember postpartum changes our body on a cellular level, right? So we might have been used to performing at a certain level, but to be honest, like it's a blank slate now, like we're dealing with a whole new body, you know, in so many ways. And so really be gentle with yourself and give yourself some grace and understand that it's not something that you should be frustrated or ashamed of, or, you know, a lot of, um, body hate can come into this time frame. And really you just 
try to shift that perspective around and say, you know what, I'm starting with a whole new body (laughs) moving through this transition. And of course, I'm going to need to start with the basics. You know, we aren't going to expect our little ones to get up and start running. They have to learn to crawl first. And we we have to do the same thing right after, after birth. Um, And something that we didn't get to touch on in this talk because of the time uh, constraints, but I think we probably if we could, and if your availability allows, I'd love to be able to talk about how moms with cesarean births, Mm -hmm. how this might affect them differently, because I'm sure that that can be kind of a big difference, or maybe it isn't, I don't know. Um, But that's something that just popped into my mind, um, um, how that might change how to strengthen um, our cores and stuff uh, post birth. So do you want me to address that quick? I can get a really Can you just at least maybe a snippet? And then if it's something yeah. that we need more information on, we can always kind of do something as a follow-up, but that would be yeah. great. Yeah, for sure. I have a lot of um, moms that are like, well, I don't need any to do any pelvic floor work because I had a cesarean. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's the, actually, that's not true. I see just as many moms in the clinic for pelvic floor issues with cesareans as I do with um, vaginal births. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's again, more, more pelvic floor specific, but I'd say for diastasis, I see this equal amounts for both. So, um, for cesarean, I mean, I, I ended up having to have an emergency C-section. So I like personally went, walk, walked through this yes. uh, and did again, the strong hormonal program afterwards, but, um, like you have five layers of tissue that are cut into that is like no joke. And so not only did they like, we stretch out all of those abdominal muscles, but then they're cut into, it's so sad. Um, so I really do think it, it takes again, both all moms, vaginal or C-section have the stretching out part and the uh, pregnancy posture changes. Like all, all moms that are carrying babies have those things. Um, but then there's our differences again, uh, with vaginal deliveries, you're going to have, um, some, maybe some more pelvic floor symptoms, um, probably more of the prolapse and incontinence, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the C-section moms might have some more hypertonicity or pelvic floor, like over tightness. Mm-hmm. Um, and then for C-section moms, again, diastasis, um, and really just honestly, core rebuilding is mm-hmm. so important, uh, for C-section mamas. Cause a lot of us, because of that, um, like that cut in those mm-hmm. abdominal muscles, we have to work so hard to do that retraining process because mm-hmm. we just totally lose that like neurological connection. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'd say what, however the baby came, it's, it's really important yes. uh, to, uh, to address it. I love that. Thank you so much for that. Cause I know that we had a few, um, uh, C-section moms that were even on, um, on with us live. So I wanted to make sure that we kind of address that specifically. So sure, this yeah. was so amazing. I, I don't know if there's any other questions. I want to give it, you know, a few minutes here to see if we have anything roll in or those of um, us who are joining a little bit later. I don't want you to feel like you didn't get your questions answered, but um, if you have additional questions, is it okay, Anna, if they come back to this thread and kind of drop some things in and maybe you can kind of help um, answer some questions if there are? Yeah, some? for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that would I be love great. About this stuff. And then uh, also, if you want to provide your link too for the Strong yeah, Mama program, that would sure. be great. Yeah. Yeah. I have, um, I was just going to say, Jesse, I have tons of videos, oh. uh, of, like free videos that are just awesome. like, I have a one on diastasis. I have a lot. I have one on back pain. I have one on running postpartum. I just did yes. one on jumping rope postpartum um, this week. Um, yeah. So there's like, so many, um, little clips and little videos and little nuggets of tips, um, on Instagram, um, stronger mama. So I'll post that link. And so mom's awesome. can. Yes, that would be great. And I'll actually upload that. I have a resources document, um, in the group Hi. too, um, a file. So I can add that link also to that document as well for people who see this much later, or they don't see this training and they can at least access those as well for later down the line. So would be great. I'm just going to check one more time to see if we have any other questions or if you had anything else too. And I didn't know if you had anything else you wanted to cover, but. Um, I was going to say, um, one thing I, I totally echo what you were saying about like the high level, high level athletes. Mm -hmm. Um, I played like collegiate sports and, um, like it was really humbling for me to be like, Oh my goodness. I like actually don't know what I'm doing postpartum, which again, for me, has been such a journey the last three and a half years to be like, okay. And like, create, like, that's kind of how I ended up 
in this women's health field, which is cool. Um, but like high level athletes, we really do have to start from the same spot. And, um, it's, it's actually really cool to see, um, that shift. Cause there is, there can be the tendency to do so much body shaming and, right. and that's, it can be so unhealthy in so many different levels. But, um, I do have a strong core mama again, this kind of the postpartum core pelvic floor program. And then I also have strong running mama now, mm-hmm. which is super fun. So it's kind of building off of strong core mama and it's really, um, helping moms that want to get back to running and jumping and again, more gym activities. Um, so that's been really fun because it kind of builds. And again, it does address, um, that more active population, Mm -hmm. um, because there's just not enough good material out there. That's like a lot of moms are like, Oh, six weeks I'm released. And then they see my friends that call me at six weeks and they're like, so I just ran and I just peed all over myself. I'm like, Oh, Oh. beforehand they're like no I'm like oh god we need a dog I know <laughs> so I hate that six like, week mark for so this. many I, things I'm so like stop weeks. like it is not six weeks like let's be it's honest not magical. It's not <laughs> no six week. Yeah. I know so and okay. I know in the medical field they have to have some sort of yeah you know marker but it's like uh there's so much that just bothers me about that time frame yeah. <laughs> yeah. postpartum can last so much longer <laughs> Yeah. Oh, well, this well, was women, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Women's health PT. I mean, in most countries it is like standard of care. Yes. Um, so like you deliver a baby and you see <sighs> a woman. Um, yes. and here it's not, which is so sad. So I know um, I just really encourage moms. Like if you can get, get in for a one-on-one evaluation, it's always like so helpful, even if it's yes. just one session, um, like it depends on your co-pays and what your insurance covers. Right. Um, John Crow Mama ends up being like a lot more financially reasonable in the long run, which is, you know, helpful, especially right. if you, babies can be expensive, right. depending on your insurance. Right. Um, right. but a lot of moms also are like, oh my goodness, I've met my deductible. So then go see a woman's health PT. Yes. Like, I love that comment. That's awesome. Yes. Yes. And I know it's hard because we're already trying to deal with the newborn, but I mean, you, those of you who are here in this group, you know, like that's, my thing is just, we have to shift our lens for postpartum to be inward again, you know, and it is about the baby it is, and we're bonding and we're providing for this child, but we have to really allow our healing to be center stage in postpartum too. And this is just one of those aspects of it, you know, so take advantage <laughs> of the, of all of the things, you know, like of our time and, and our financial, you know, I don't know, wiggle room, I guess you could say, if you have met your deductible, do it, you know, Mm -hmm. see somebody sooner rather than later. So Mm -hmm. for sure. Well, I don't think I have any other questions rolling in here and I'm pretty sure we addressed all of them from before. So that's great. But if anybody has any questions after watching the replay, go ahead and let us know, hashtag replay. And then if you drop your question, um, if Anna doesn't see it, I'll be monitoring and I can always reach out to her too, to get some answers for you all. Um, And then Anna will provide her links too. So if you guys are interested in um, checking out the program, I highly recommend it. I think it's super doable for moms who are busy and who can't get out and go see somebody in person. Um, You know, it's, and if you don't have something severe, it's an amazing program. So, um, definitely check it out and thank you so much for coming on tonight again. And I really appreciate everything. The information was wonderful. Um, and hopefully we can do this again on another topic if something comes up. So I would love that. (laughs) There's a lot of women's health PT topics. Yes. (laughs) It's never ending, right? (laughs) Yeah. So yeah, I'm happy to chat more. And also if anyone that's, you know, listening to this want, has any questions, just reach out to me because I love talking about this stuff. And if you're you're in for Collins, come see me because I, I really do love making connections with all the ladies I get to talk to. So yes, for sure. Well, thank you so much. Thank you everybody who joined us live and uh, I will upload this very shortly. So if you need to catch the replay, please do so. Have a great night, everybody. Thanks, Anna. (laughs) Thank you.